on Divorce Court today. Friends with benefits quickly grew into love, then marriage. But Sandra is crushed by Jalil's drinking, flirting, and fight so loud, the police know them by name. Jalil Mir Valley Alazade Jr. and Sandra Garza have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in divorce court starts now. Mr. Mir Valley Alazade? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Garza? Yes. The two of you came here not for a divorce, not for a before your vows. You've been married for four months. You called my people and said, we don't want to get divorced. We want some advice because we're four months in and it's already ugly. Mm -hmm. yes, and so I liked it that you were that self-aware. People do do that on occasion, call for it. So I'm going to do it for you today. And I, I'm going to call you Mr. Mir because I can't handle the rest of it. <laughs> uh, so Most if you can. don't mind, I, 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 I'm going to do that. I gave you a compatibility test just for the heck of it because you guys were so new to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just wanted to see what was going on back there. So we're going to talk about that momentarily. I'm going to start with Mr. Mir. What do you think the problem is so early on in this relationship? It's trust issues. There's a lot of trust issues. Okay. Um, early on in the relationship, before we even got married, <clears throat> we had a mutual acquaintance, mm -hmm. and I had a fallout with him. And pretty much what happened was I, I had warned her. I said, stay away from him. I don't want you talking to him. I want to say about a month before we got married, we kind of separated. So what did she do? Right when I, you know, we decided to separate for a little bit to take time apart from each other. Come to find out, she calls him up one day when she's drunk. And I didn't find this out until two weeks after we got married. And that really, like, hurt me and upset me because, like, for her to sit there and tell me that she loves me and cares about me and she's always like, oh, I want to spend time with you, don't leave me, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really hurt me because I put all my trust in everything that I had to take care of her and her kids and clean up and after them and give her money and help her fix things around the house. Yeah. I just you felt do, like I was... Yeah, I, and I understand that. You do have several children, correct? Yes. You have five. Five. And you have... I have four. Four... But they don't currently live with you, no. correct? Yeah, okay, they come on the weekends. They come on the weekends. Oh, yes. you got a house full on the weekends. Yes, I do. <laughs> Other than that, and I understand that, and I'm going to address that with her momentarily about the guy that you didn't want her to talk to. Does she do other things that cause you to distrust her? Uh, not really. I wouldn't say distrust. It just makes me want to, like, not trust her as much because there's certain things that when I try to talk to her, Every time that I bring up a subject that yeah. she doesn't like, she's just always like, oh, well, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, I don't want to talk about that because it creates an argument. Oh, I'm going to start fighting with you. Well, what kind of subjects does do, will she her, refuse to speak about? About her insecurities. Uh -huh. I, think, I think she says she's not, but I think she is. Because mm -hmm. it's like every time I speak on something or wherever I bring up a female or any kind of female, oh, you want to talk to her. Oh, you like her. Why don't you just be with her? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I can't have a conversation with any kind of female without her trying to, like, you know what I mean? She, she thinks it's a thing. Yes, you know, exactly. you can't mention a yes. woman's no, name. I'm flirting. She I'm thinks, a, thinks I'm she got a thing. flirting with her. You know what I mean? If I even have a conversation. Is this new? Is this subsequent to the, the marriage? Or is this something that you were dealing with throughout the course of your courtship? Well, she's done it prior, but it wasn't as bad as it was now. It's gotten worse. Yes. So with that being said, like, I just kind of feel like I can't even speak to her because it, but once I start bringing up a subject, Oh, well, look at the way you're talking to me. Oh, and she just, like, storms out and just doesn't want to talk to me or talk about the issue. Okay. You know I gotcha. what I mean? I got gotcha. you. Ms. Garza, first of all, what do you want to say about that guy? You knew he didn't like him. You knew they fell out. You get, you know, drunk and dialing, which is yeah. never a good idea. Oh, I also knew him. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. I also knew him. They were mutual. Was, he was a mutual friend. Yes, and it was months before we got married, not a month. But, yeah, I didn't tell him until after we were married. Mm-hmm. But, but he, you kind of called him just to, to make him mad, right? You knew he was the one guy that he couldn't stand. So you called him kind of like a, like a junior high sort of thing to do, right? Isn't that uh, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. You know that's what it was, right? She actually slept with him. So that's the, that's the problem that I had with the whole situation. Well, color me wrong. <laughs> yes. You slept with him? We had broke up. We weren't planning on getting back together. So, yeah, that happened. Can I just... I mean, this is just me. I'm old school and all that kind of stuff. But just sex 
casual, oh, well, we're in the car together, let's, you know what I mean? Sex is a big friggin' deal. Yes. It just is. Whether you want to treat it that way or not, it's huge. You are, are making yourself vulnerable to another person. Both parties, you're possibly transmitting killer diseases. You are possibly creating a life. It's not something you do on the whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you go putt putt golfing on the whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now, he also said that you're unwilling to engage in a conversation with him regarding things he believes are important. Why don't you respond to that allegation? He never lets me speak. Every time we have a conversation, he interrupts every time I speak. That's why it's good I'm here, because he can't interrupt me here, but he's always interrupting me, so that's why I always walk away from him. What does he get mad about? What do you get mad about? He, gets mad. He's, he has an anger problem. He's always mad. If something's on the floor, he'll just be screaming, cussing, and the kids are all right there. Like, they already know he's always screaming and cussing. Neighbors could hear him. I mean, he's Hang really on. loud. Mr. Mir, now, and I want you, I just, you know, step back. You're trying to save your marriage, right? Yes, ma'am. Ste step back. Do you have an anger issue? I'm do not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I do to an extent. To an extent. Okay. But the, the thing is, is like you can only deal with so much. I got. It's not like okay with me. She's only dealing with me. I live with her at her house with her kids. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I see you. So I have to deal not just with her, but with her kids. Right. And I'm sitting there trying to discipline them. And then when she's like, at first, I didn't. I didn't want to discipline them. And I said, hey man, you know these kids need discipline them. You know, so on, mm. so on, so on. So I was like, well, you know what? If you want me to, I'll step up. Next, did Jalil's behavior with a bartender cross the line? If the ink on your marriage license is barely dry, but you're ready to call it quits, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real people, real conflict, real judgments. Divorce Court continues. This is a, a bit of a small thing, but I just, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> you say that he stole $100 out of the rent money to buy booze. Mm -hmm. Explain that. What happened? It's not the first time he stole money from me. Um, I was, when you say steal, I, what do you mean? I was asleep, and the next morning he tells me, Oh, I use some of the rent, and I'm like, for what? And I, I wanted to drink more when you were asleep. Well, did that happen? Yes, it did, Your Honor. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Is that a regular event or was that no, a one-off? No, it's, one it's only happened two times, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I do regret it. I apologize to her for about it. She just feels like, well, you didn't apologize. Why do you gotta go through my stuff? Like we go out drinking to mm -hmm. bars. You know what I mean? We go to a drinking, have fun, go watch a game or whatever, and we'll be at a bar, and like everything will be going good, and then all of a sudden we'll get into a fight. Uh -huh. Like, if a female's there or anybody's there trying to speak to us, like, an example, we went to watch a game. Yeah. And a female bartender was making jokes with us. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we were, you know, feeling good, all of a sudden she's like, well, you're flirting with her? You like her? Why don't you go out with her? Ask her out. And I'm, that's where the fight begins. You see what I'm saying? And then, like, all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I don't got to deal with this. So we right. get back, and I'm there drinking by myself. She falls asleep. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back to the bar, go drink by myself. Okay. Hang on. Are you jealous? And has he given you any reason to be jealous? I'm not gonna lie, yes I am. But he disrespects me. When we go to stores, he doesn't glance at women. He's there staring and just looking and looking. If they're wearing something short, he'll just be there. And he will, it's like I'm not even there. He'll be doing it. That's what we argue about all the time. And he admits to doing it. Let, let me ask you this. Like, the example that he gave about the bar and when the bartender was chat, chatting you guys up, mm -hmm. You know that's kind of their job, yeah, to, to keep you happy and talking. What was it about how he responded that made you go off like that? Because she didn't want him. I can tell you right now, she didn't want him. She was she, she wanted a good tip. <laughs> <laughs> so so what did she say that you found so, or what did he say that you found so disturbing that you had to start an argument about it? It wasn't a really big argument. Um, just he'll be like, oh, we're gonna come back and just stuff like that. Just right in front of you, though, right? Yeah. You know, if he was gonna do something, he wouldn't have said that in front of you. You get that part, yeah. right? Yeah, but that's not all he does. He messages. What else other, does he do? He messages other females on Facebook all the time. And what kind of messages 
does he send? Um, I, oh, when we were together, we weren't married yet. He's asked other females to go over. He's horny. He wants to have Let, sex. Let's say women. <laughs> females. Always makes me feel like you're talking about livestock. We don't say males. <laughs> you know, it's just like the females over there. Just, just, he, he yeah. messages other women. Yes, all and, the time. And what does he say? Come over here. I'm going to call you right now. I want to see you. And he's told me he hasn't had sex with anybody on his Facebook. Then I read his messages, and he was all, yeah, like the last time, I want to hit it again, stuff like that. Mr. Mayor, is that? That is true. And, well, but hold up. The thing is, is when I messaged these females, we weren't together at that time. I did flirt with other females. And the girl that she's talking about, I had sex with her, like, long time ago. Before you were married? Be way before I was married to her. Before I even knew her. Okay, I've do you still years. message these women with whom you once had a relationship? No and yes. And I'm going to explain to that. I know it sounds crazy. Yes, yes it does. no. Because some of the female <laughs> friends that I did used to talk to as, like, as getting to know, I just ended up becoming friends with them. And throughout the years, I stayed in contact with them through Facebook. Just like, you know, that guy was off limits to her. Yeah. And if she ever spoke to him again, it would bother you. The same feelings occur on her side of the bench. I you used to sleep with her, so the same rule that applies to her needs to apply to you. You can't have it both ways. I understand you, that, you, Your Honor, but it's not like I go out like... No, 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 no. You don't need to, to talk to these women. Yeah. If you used to sleep with them and it bothers her, you don't need to talk to them. When divorce court continues, through the anger and flirting, does Jalil think this marriage is all about we or all about me? Do you believe that Jalil and Sandra can learn to trust each other and make their marriage work? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. I'm going to go to the compatibility test because there's some things that I want to discuss. You said a couple interesting things there, Mr. Mir. First of all, he writes it all cat. <laughs> Large letters. You can see his energy in his, his penmanship. That's right. You say, when I asked, do you think women are more emotional than men? He said, yes, I do. And I believe that most of the decisions women make are based on emotions. That's what you said. Then you said, I asked you the question, if you could change one thing about your intended, what would it be? He says, she always walks away when I'm trying to resolve an issue. I hate that. <laughs> Did you check out the pronoun you used? Nah, I just, it when just came out. When I'm trying to resolve an issue. Not when we're trying to resolve an issue. I, a singular person, cannot resolve an issue. I, a singular person, can demand things. I can instruct. I can tell. But I cannot resolve. Only we can resolve. And that's one of your problems. Yeah. That you think that she needs to stand there and listen to what you say. And what you say goes because you're a man and you're logical and that makes you right. You say women make emotional decisions. Now, let me say this. When you're loud and yelling, which you, you agree you do a lot. Yes, ma'am. What are you when you're loud and yelling? What, what emotion is that? That's aggressive. It's anger. Anger is an emotion. E emotion. <laughs> You're dealing emotionally. You fog it up and say aggression and logic, but it's really all it is is emotion. And until you recognize that you're emotional in the means by which you conduct your business, you'll never be able to fix anything because you think that you're right. You could be right, but you're emotional about it. And until you can control your emotions, you can't control your household. Did you see what I'm saying? Yes, My mother used to have a saying. She said, once you get mad, you lose. 
If you get mad, that means whatever she did or said has hijacked your limbic system in the brain, and she's in control of your head. I understand. And you have to be in charge of that. It's a job handling your emotions. It's, you'll never be able to resolve anything if she can't stay in the room with you, and she can't stay in the room with you because you're so angry, it's, it's scary. So you'll never be able to fix anything. And you're the dude, and you said you should be head of the household, right? Yes, ma'am. You can't lead unless you're willing to go first. You can't say, but she, but she, but she, until you say, I will, I will, I will. I'll change, I'll do this, I'll do that. I'll better myself, and I'm telling you how to do that right now. And you're trying to bring it back on to her, but what I'm telling you as, as, as leader, captain, <laughs> head honcho, <Yeah. laughs> you gotta learn not to be so emotional. You, you got to show up logical. And if you're fussing and hollering, you're not logical. You with me? I'm with you. Got to change that. Got to fix it. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Ms. Garza. Now, having seen what I just said to your husband, mm -hmm. if I were to come to you, what would you think I would point at as the biggest mistake you're making? The trust, I guess, always telling him that he's doing... You're speaking your fear. You're not speaking his reality. And if he does ever cheat on you, if he ever runs around on you, it will not... You will not collapse. You will not die. You will not fall over. So don't bring about your own nightmare. Yeah. By saying, you could, you could, you could, you could. That's fear. And you have to know that you're going to be okay no matter what happens. And that he hasn't done anything except that Facebook nonsense, which also you need to cut out. Don't message anybody. The same rules apply. Don't, don't talk to anybody you used to sleep with. You know, especially if she's jealous, you got to make her feel comfortable. But anyway, you got to cut that out. Yeah, I know. And both of you need to back off the booze. Y'all drink too much. And you would be surprised at the kind of problems that fall into the river of liquor. And both of you mentioned alcohol a number of times. And if you're both drinking, kids don't have a shot at it. You got that? I agree you're with that. me. Each one of you has to make a concession, and the other one needs to respond with a concession. The first concession you do has to be to that booze. That's number one. Number two, you got to tamp down that temper, and if you can't handle it by yourself, you get somebody to help you, because your marriage will not survive on that hot plate. And you've got to tamp down the fear and the jealousy. And every time you don't get angry, say, I, I could get angry, but I'm not, and you thank him for not getting angry. You shouldn't have to, but do it, because he's stepping out of his comfort box. And every time she says, all right, you know, that's something I would have said something about before, but I'm not gonna, you thank her for that. And every time she does something, you have to outdo her. You have to outdo whatever kindness she shows, and you have to outdo whatever anger he doesn't show. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. The contest is not against each other. It's the two of you against the rest of the world. And, and, and you've got to fight it like that. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. You're in control of more than you think and not as in control of the things you think you are. You're not in control of how you feel, and you need to get there. I understand. And so do you. And if y'all don't put down that liquor, I'm gonna come down over there and break all those bottles. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes, yes ma'am. It'll never work. I think y'all have it. I'm a believer. You know, my marriage sucked for a year and a half. Got through it because we both decided that we were going to fight for it. I believe you can do that. You're early on. You came here for help. I believe in the two of you. You can do it, but you got to be willing to change because you listened to me. I can see you listening, and you listened too because that means you want to do something differently, but mm -hmm. you have to do something. The only thing you can't do is what you've done the day before. That much we know, okay? Yes, ma'am. Good luck to both of you. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> Jalil agrees with the judge that his behavior is rigid 
and he has vowed to change to save their marriage. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.